Hello friends, NMIMS welcomes you to your rendezvous with the knowledge stream of international business. This presentation consists of the first lesson, named Introduction to International Business. The International Business Division develops and markets products suiting to the specific need of the market. In today's world, it has become quite imperative for every substantial organization to be involved in international business in one way or the other. This lesson introduces the concepts of international business, various aspects and issues related to it, and the theories that explain it. It follows from the previous slide that after studying this lesson, you should be able to define international business, describe the various benefits of international business, define globalization, explain the various theories of international trade. Now let us discuss various aspects of international business. What do you think as the reason behind people involving themselves in international business? Well, there might be various reasons behind it. For example, there might be some company that wants to expand sales or acquire resources or maybe minimize risk. In the recent years, we've seen a lot of cross-border trade. One of the reasons behind the tremendous progress in communication and transportation technology enables people in one part of the world to know about and demand products and services developed in another part of the world. Every country restricts the movement across its border for goods, services and resources, such as workers and the capital to produce, both making international business more expensive. Companies and governments have developed services that facilitate and ease international business. Innovations in transportation and communications. Consumers are aware of the products and services available in other countries. The consumer wants more new, better and differentiated products. Moreover, an increase in global competition is also one of the prime reasons behind the increase in international business. Modes of international business include merchandise and service exports and imports and investments. Many of the terms used in international business are multinational enterprise or M&E is a company that takes a global approach to foreign market and production. Multinational corporation is also commonly used in international business arena and often used interchangeably for an M&E. Another term sometimes used as a synonym for an M&E, especially by the United Nations, is transnational company, TNC. Companies with international operations can be global or multi-domestic. A global company, sometimes called a globally integrated company, integrates its operations that are located in different countries. The company forms its strategies and the means to implement them after examining the external environment. To operate within a company's external environment, its managers should have, in addition to knowledge of business operations, a working knowledge of basic social sciences, political sciences, law, anthropology, sociology, psychology, economies, and geography. The important special problem in international marketing are political and legal differences, cultural differences, economic differences, differences in the currency unit, differences in the language, differences in the marketing infrastructure, trade restrictions, high costs of distance, and differences in trade practices. International competition may not be a matter of choice when survival is at stake. The main benefits of international business include growth of overseas market and expanding market reach, sales and profit. Foreign markets constitute a larger share of the total business of many firms that are wisely cultivated markets abroad. Demand for mass products is affected by such cyclical factors as recession and such seasonal factors as climate. The unfortunate consequence of these variables is sales fluctuation, which can frequently be substantial enough to cause layoffs of personnel. Inflation and price moderation. The benefits of exports are readily self-evident. Imports can also be highly beneficial to a country because they constitute reserve capacity for the local economy, improved employment and increased standard of living. Interdependence and integration of individual countries of the world may be termed as globalization. Thus, globalization integrates not only the economies but also societies. The various features of globalization are opening and planning to expand business throughout the world, erasing the difference between domestic markets and foreign markets, buying and selling goods and services from or 
to any country in the world. Establishing manufacturing and distribution facilities in any part of the world based on feasibility and ability rather than national consideration. Product planning and development are based on market consideration of the entire world. According to Ohame, globalization has five stages. Domestic company exports to foreign countries through the dealers or distributors of the home country. In the second stage, the domestic company exports to foreign countries directly on its own. In the third stage, the domestic company becomes an international company by establishing production and marketing operations in various key foreign countries. In the fourth stage, the company replicates a foreign company in a foreign country by handling all the facilities including R&D, full-fledged human resources, etc. In the fifth stage, the company becomes a true foreign company by serving the need of foreign customers just like the host country's company. Thus, globalization means globalizing the market, production, investment, technology and other services. Coca-Cola, Pepsi, McDonald's Burgers, Madonna's Music, MTV, Sony Walkman, Levi's Jeans, Indian Masal Dosa, Indian Hyderabadi Biryani, etc. are a few brands popular worldwide. What benefits do they derive from globalized operations? The major advantage of globalization are free flow of capital, free flow of technology, spread out the manufacturing facilities, balanced development of world economies, increase in production and consumption, low prices with high quality, cultural exchange and demand for variety of products and many more. But is globalization only beneficial? Major disadvantages of globalization are that it kills domestic business, exploits human resources, leads to unemployment and underemployment, decline in the demand for domestic products, widening gap between rich and poor, etc. Though the critics of globalization fear of the negative consequence of globalization, its supporters argue that it is only a short-run phenomenon. In the long run, the process of globalization results in overall development of the world's nations. At this point, it is viewed that globalization is inevitable for the development of world nations. A number of theories have been developed to explain the basis of international business. Let us take the first one. It is the mercantilists' view on trade. Mercantilists maintained that one of the way a nation becomes rich and powerful was to export more than it imported. The resulting export surplus would then be settled by an inflow of bullion or precious metals, primarily gold and silver. According to Adam Smith, trade between two nations is based on absolute advantage. When one nation is more efficient than another in the production of one commodity but is less efficient than the other in producing a second commodity, then both the nations can gain by each specializing in the production of the commodity of its absolute advantage and exchanging part of its output with the other nation for the commodity of its absolute disadvantage. By this process, resources are utilized in the more efficient way and the output of both commodities will rise. According to the comparative study theory, countries in the long run will tend to specialize in the business, production and marketing of those goods in whose business they enjoy comparative low-cost advantage and import other goods in which the countries have comparative cost disadvantage. If free trade is allowed, this specialization helps in the mutual advantage of countries participating in international business. Swedish economists Elie Heckscher in 1990 and Bertil Ohlin in 1933 put forward a different explanation of comparative advantage. They argued that comparative advantage arises from differences in national factor endowment. By factor endowments, they meant the extent to which a country is endowed with resources such as land, labor and capital. Nations have varying factor endowments and different factor endowments explain differences in factor costs. The more abundant a factor, the lower its cost. Raymond Vernon initially proposed the product life cycle theory in the mid-1960s. Vernon argued that the wealth and size of US market gave American firms a strong incentive to develop cost-saving process innovations. Vernon argued that most new products were initially produced in America. Apparently, the pioneering firms believed it was better to keep production facilities close to the market and to the firm's center of decision-making given the uncertainty and risks inherent in introducing a new product. 
Also, the demand for most new products tend to be raised on non-price factors. Consequently, firms can change relatively high prices for new products, which obviates the need to look for low-cost production sites in other countries. Now, let us check if we've understood the various concepts discussed in this lesson clearly. m and &E is the firm that owns operations in more than one country. Right or wrong? Right. FDI stands for Foreign Development Index. Right or wrong? Wrong. TNC stands for Tamil Nadu Corporation. Right or wrong? Wrong. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we've studied till so far. The analytical framework of international business is built around the activities of the MNEs explained by the process of internalization. Before the emergence of multinationals, foreign trade and international business were synonyms. International trade doctrines based upon labor cost differentials and free trade guided the international transactions. Innovative efforts of the MNEs in technological development and management styles superseded the international trade theories. Theorists began to develop the FDI approach in support of international business for improvement and welfare of the world economies. Several theories have been formulated from time to time which have attempted to explain the basis of international trade and FDI. With regard to international trade, the doctrine of mercantilism was the earliest. Its postulation was that nation could become rich by acquiring gold from abroad which was possible by increasing exports and decreasing imports. The interest of the nation was supreme to them. Adam Smith and Ricardo rejected the mercantilist's notion on the grounds that the gains of individuals were the gain of the nation, and any activity which increased the consumption of the people should be considered with favor. 